Hey guys, so when we last left our intrepid adventurer, he was busy working on uh, getting those stripped out screws. Shut up. They can see what I'm doing. Sorry. These. So, sorry about that. That guy rattles on. I don't know why you won't tolerate him. Um, so what I've got here is I've got one, two, three, four screws that I have completely stripped out. Um, a number of you have contacted me about good ways to get, you know, to unstrip these screws. Everything from uh, dumbass don't over tighten them to, hey, use a different tool to uh, use various break free penetrating oils and all sorts of stuff. And that was all excellent advice. Except at this point, it's too late. <laughs> um, uh, all of those pieces of advice were fantastic, but at this point I've got four screws that I can't get out. Uh, I went and looked for torque screws. I even contacted Vans uh, to see if they had torque screws they would sell. They say, no, you get those at auto parts store. I went by a couple of the auto parts store here locally and they did not have them. So I'm going to research online, see if I can find some online that I can get inexpensively. But uh, in the long term, or in the short term rather, I have to get these four screws out. Uh, to that end, I've got a couple of these um, spiral extractors here where you, you know, the, you, you turn it in backwards and that allows you to pull it out. So uh, I'm going to give that a shot and see if I can't get these suckers out. Um, I'm going to try using the smallest one. And hopefully that will work and step up to the slightly bigger one if I have to. If I have to actually drill these out, God, that's going to suck. Um, hopefully I don't, but you know, you do what you got to do. Um, if I do have to drill them out, I can always replace the nut plate that's in here since I have access to it. So it's not horrible, it's just unfortunate. So anyways, that's what I'm working on now. Holy shit, it works. Success! Alright, so um, this system works out really well. This screw's coming straight out. Uh, I'm looking at the, the screw itself, and I drilled it, you know, drilled it out, not very much. I only drilled down just a little bit, really, just enough to get purchased this backwards threaded extractor bit, I guess. And it looks like I didn't drill into this at all, you know, through this at all, so that means this should be fine. So awesome. Um, what a good system. Yeah. I like it. So I did go to a handheld as opposed to like a drill or something. I figured doing it by hand would be better. I did have to get the bigger, beefier to dr drill to drill into this as my little cordless drill just didn't have the oomph to drill into these screws. So cool. Now I just got to do a couple more. Awesome. What a pain in the ass. Um, okay, so uh, I did manage to get all of those uh, screws out, all those that were just just in there as tight as could be. I don't know if I over tightened them or if maybe some grit got in when I was screwing them in. Who knows? Uh, either way, we're, we're, we're going to solve this problem, so that's, that's not a problem going forward. Um, I did get a couple different types of screws from Home Depot, the Home Depot Aviation Department, um, that are the exact same style, but they're, one is a, a brass and the other one is a stainless steel. Uh, and I'm going to see if those work any better. If they do, then I may go to those, uh, or I'll try to find those Torx bits, like I had said. Uh, the final one here did actually uh, give me a little bit of a heartburn in that I couldn't get it off using the smaller tool. Uh, I drilled the hole, and the smaller tool, just, it just wouldn't bite. So I stepped it up to the larger one, came right out, no big deal. Um, so, yeah, hey, that worked. Awesome. So I had a bunch of you reach out to me while I was gone. So uh, first of all, uh, y'all were wondering where the hell I was. Um, I had to go back to Texas in my motorhome to uh, do a family reunion thing. My, my family has a weekend long family reunion. We decided to go down there uh, about a half a week early to be there uh, so my wife could work at her office. Normally she works remotely from home up here in the mountains, but she's actually working for a company there. And so she spent some time bonding with her coworkers there. Then we did the family reunion and then a whole week of her going back and working with them while I puttered and didn't work on the plane. Um, but uh, I'm finally back. So I was like, like two and a half weeks of me not getting to do anything on the plane at all. And as you might imagine, uh, that sucks. <laughs> I kind of want to, I kind of want to come out here and work on it and I, I can't always do it. 
But uh, anyways, that's where we're at. Uh, I'm gonna jump back into things and uh, I get lots of feedback. Lots of people always asking me, where have you been? Thank you guys. It, it really warms my heart that you guys care enough to ask uh, your concerns. No, I haven't crashed into the ground or, or fallen off the planet or anything like that. I just, uh, life, life gets in the ways. Uh, and that, that's the thing, you know, when you build these planes, stuff happens and you know, what do you do? Uh, I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, this is a very long-term project that I want to keep plugging away at, uh, but there are definitely going to be times when, for whatever reason, week, month, whatever, however long, uh, just things have to pause. So, anyway. Hey guys, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, if you do me a favor, you jump over to my Patreon page and for as little as a dollar a month you can help support this project. Think of it as buying me a cup of coffee over the internet. Thanks. So while that guy's over there working on getting the, uh, the tank off, str struggling, you know, fighting the good fight and struggling to get that sucker off, uh, I thought I would talk about uh, this bracket again. So in a previous video, I, I had talked about this um, bulletin, this service bulletin that had come out uh, that was to replace this entire structure because they were finding some cracking in it. Uh, I did so per their instructions uh, and notice there was some binding between this piece and a couple of these rivets down here. Well, to alleviate that, uh, I went through and I just kind of changed the shape of this piece a little bit because I didn't want to ruin or screw up this at all. I figured I'd leave it alone. Um, it's still pretty close. Um, there is no binding. The scratching you're hearing is this bar down here. There is no binding at all here, um, but I mean, you never know as things change shape slightly, maybe in the heat or whatever, uh, that could become a problem. And that's the last thing you want is to have a problem on this part in flight. So uh, since they have since come out with a new version of this bulletin with those two rivets flush mounted, I basically have to flush mount them. So that means um, I'm gonna have to pull this part off uh, again and drill out those two rivets, which means I'm gonna have to pull this off as well, I think. Yeah, probably. And um, get in there and see about making that change. Uh, that sucks, I hate doing the same work over and over again, so. But uh, that's, that's kind of an important one, so yet again, uh, that's something I'm definitely gonna get after and do here shortly. So just so you know, for those of you guys that are doing this, if you're going to go ahead and do this service bulletin when you're building your wings uh, in the event that you have one of the older kits that doesn't have this updated service bulletin, just know that these two bottom uh, rivets need to be flush mounted. I'm not sure I have flush mounted that long. I'll have to look. Hmm, we'll see. All right, so while I continue to plug away in the background at clearing out those two rivets on either side of the bottom part of the aileron hinge, the inboard aileron hinge, uh, I realized that, first of all, it was tough to get that thing out of there, but second, I don't have any rivets to replace it with. The rivet that goes in there, this one, is a 470, the round-topped uh, 4-11. The problem is I don't have any 420s, the 425s that are, that are 11. I have this, this 16, which is way too long. Uh, that's part of the fuselage kit. I have no idea where it's used in the fuselage, but it's, it's something that's meant for something else. So I, I'm gonna have to get online and order a couple of rivets in order to fix this. Extra rivets never go, uh, never go to waste as a general rule. You never know when you're going to need them. And the beauty about getting something that's as long as 11 is you can actually cut it back down to something shorter if you ever need it. So I'll get online and order a couple of those from Aircraft Spruce and hopefully we'll have that put together here shortly. I mean, that's that's part of the problem of the build is a lot of times it's a hurry up and wait. You know, you have to order something and wait for it to come in. That, that goes along with what I was talking about at the very beginning of this video is just an overabundance of life gets in the way and uh, you know sometimes you got to wait for things you you know get the right tool for the job uh, so that's what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of waiting for stuff to come in I'm picking and poking at things that I can while I have the time uh, but sometimes you just kind of got to go crap I can't proceed until I get thing so that's that's where we are right now with those rivets I, I just got to wait for them to come in and when they do I can get back to work 
I've had a few people ask me about this table and what's on this table. Uh, one of the things they always ask about is this big box. I said, hey, is, is that big box a 3D printer? Uh, the answer is yes. This is an XYZ Duo, uh, what is it, DaVinci Duo Pro 3D printer. And it is a piece of hot shit. Um, do not buy one of these. It is garbage. It does not work very well at all. Uh, some of it may be operator error. I think most of it is that it's just junk. So, but yes, I have a 3D printer, a bunch of batteries and all sorts of stuff because I have a lot of irons in the fire and a whole bunch of projects that I'm always working on. Uh, I don't just build planes, I build all kinds of crap. I think that's very common. Usually people that are creators like to build things or pl putter and putter and play. Uh, I am the same. Uh, my current hobby is around Raspberry Pis. Those things are amazing. So anyways, uh, 3D printer, good. This 3D printer, bad. So yeah. Alrighty then, well here we have the tank test kit. Comes as a single, uh, a single kit. It's got three items in here uh, and some instructions. Costs a couple bucks, Van sells them. Um, the reason why I wanted to pull this off, as opposed to leaving it on the wing, and trust me, I went back and forth on this a lot. I had wired this into place and didn't want to pull it back off because as you saw, it's a pain in the ass to get off, but, I want to be able to fill it full of fuel and then like slot, not only just slosh it around, but like, you know, leave it in a position, like put it this way for a day and see if I get any leakage. And then the other way for a day and see if I get any leakage, flip it over and see if I get any leakage. That's hard to do when it's on the wing. So uh, first though, I want to check this out. And this is the first time I've opened this. So it comes with uh, three parts. I'm not sure what they're for. One of them looks like it goes on here as a cap. So this one looks like it, it goes on here as a seal. And then I'm not sure. Oh, maybe I'm supposed to have used this before I sealed this guy. So that's going to be a problem. Uh, this looks like it's meant to go in there and you're supposed to use this as an air. Well, where does it go over here? Oh no, this looks like it goes here. And then I guess this little guy, which is just a, a seal, was probably meant to go here to seal that up. So I don't have a way to seal that. Okay, that's problem number one. I'm gonna put that back in there for now. Let's see what the instructions say here. Do, 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 do. All right, so after constructing fuel tanks, they should be leak tested by using low air pressure. Of course, you don't want to put too much pressure on it because otherwise you're actually going to induce a leak by blowing the sucker apart. You know, if you pump this up to 100 PSI or something crazy, uh, which, which by the way, is what's your, what's your, uh, your regular compressors do they they output between 85 and 100 psi that would ruin all the work you've done so don't hook that up to you know one of these valves even though you could you want to just use like a little hand pump or a little bike pump let's see um in operation the maximum pressure in the fuel tank is very low less than one psi uh, considering the size of the tank, these square inches available will take very little pressure to rupture seams. Great care must be taken to not overpressure the tank when testing. It is difficult to find a pressure gauge that reads such low pressure. Uh, use one of the methods below to check the tank. Install the filler cap and tape over it with packing tape or, or duct tape to prevent leak. So that's the fill tank over there. Uh, I'll be interesting to see if it leaks at all. I mean, there's a big rubber gasket around that thing. If it leaks, you've got bigger problems. Well, but at the same time, I mean, when it's sitting, you know, on the tarmac on the plane, that's on top. So I guess leaking, and it's not only on top, but it's on top on the highest part. So I guess leaking from there wouldn't be a big problem. Um, let's see, cap off the fuel pickup fitting with the cap and nut provided. So yeah, that's, that's this guy right here. And I don't know... I don't know if that, I don't know if that would seal or if I have to put something in there to seal. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, for the RV-10, install a quarter inch pipe plug in place of the f uh, finger strainer. That's, 
that's this guy. Uh, remove the sump pump drain if installed and install the air valve. Oops. Uh, let's see, verify that the vent line is open. Put a balloon on the, on the line and tape it in place. Which line? Verify that the vent line is open. I thought this was the vent line. Or is this the vent line? We'll have to, this is the vent line right here. So here's your vent line. I, I'm, I'm confused as to what this part is for. So this goes on here. This guy will go into here. Okay, that this is starting to make sense. So this goes in here, this goes on here, and you wanna put a balloon on this guy. When the balloon is inflated, squirt soapy water all over the screws. Don't forget the tape attachment. Look for bubbles. Let's see, an alternative to using the balloon is to make a manometer. Attach a length of plastic. Okay. All right, so basically they're doing exactly what I've already done. Um, so in my, one of my previous videos, what I had done is exactly that. I actually used a balloon uh, and sealed it over these holes. I blew it up by blowing into this just mouth pressure to where I could feel it was pushing back so I, I knew not to overpressurize it. And then... Um, once that was done, I put a balloon out here and the balloon stayed, uh, filled up for a day and a half. And then I came back and it was flat. Not only was it flat, but it was actually like sucked in. I thought, oh man, I've got a leak. But then I didn't think about it. I went off to work. I came back the next day and it was back big, big again. Well, barometric pressure changed. And so it changed the inside of the tank. It actually stayed consistent. So that tells me I don't really have a leak on this one, but I still need to test it with fuel. Uh, so I think on this tank, I am good to go. I am going to go get uh, a bunch of aeroplane fuel and put it in this sucker and roll it around. Um, I will have to seal this. This is the only one I'm not sure how to seal. This I can seal using this. Not sure how to seal this guy yet. Um, we'll see. I'll figure that out. But once I do that, roll. going to roll fuel around in here, let it sit for a while, and go from there. Uh, I think we're good to go on the one tank. Then then it's about checking that tank. The work I had done underneath where I had uh, underneath right under here on that tank didn't seal it correctly. And then I in that previous video I showed you where I, I just reached under and I was doing it by hand. It looks like shit, uh, but it works. I'm going to put my uh, scope cam back in here uh, and uh, get up in there and with a syringe of the stuff, like a, like a, a, an animal syringe or something, get up in there and finish filling all that in and then do my testing on that using just water. So we're a couple steps behind on that tank. This tank I think is in a good place unless the fuel test tells me otherwise. And I hope it doesn't because then I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do. Um, we'll see. So anyways, that's where I'm at on this. A couple of you guys asked about why I had these little uh, labels on here. Um, the idea is eventually there's going to be a skin here and there's going to be a panel over this. And I've got these uh, labels on here like angle of attack AOA. The green is the pitot tube. Here's my tip wires are in this piece of plastic. The reason I've had those on there is because down the road, uh, let's say five, 10 years, I mean, I plan to keep this plane forever. Or if I sell it and somebody else opens up, they'll know what this tube is. My memory is not good. I'll be like, hey, what was that blue tube for? You know, so that's, that's the idea behind this. Some people have said, though, I shouldn't have used this stuff because this is like a heat tape, I guess. Uh, it's, 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 it changes color with the label through a heat transfer or something inside the little label maker. And so uh, sitting out on the tarmac or something like that, this will basically heat up and eventually these will be just a black mess and you won't be able to read it. Um, to that end, I've put uh, tape over it, like a clear tape, maybe hoping to offset some of that. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it's, a, it's an attempt. <laughs> You know, Maybe pointless, but it's an attempt. Maybe I'll write something inside here just as a note to myself or to future me's, whoever they are, about what these things are. So anyways, that's what those labels are. Thanks, guys. That's where I'm going to end this one. Sorry it took so long to get out. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. I'm going to try to get back on my weekly schedule. Uh, overabundance of life, I keep saying. Sometimes that's what happens when you really want other things to happen. Anyways, if you do me a favor, click that thumbs up and like button. Uh, it really helps my rankings, and I'll see you next time.